Hello everyone, my name is Kasim. Welcome to the Million Dollar Challenge. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the market in a little bit because we need to touch, touch upon the market um, right now. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to talk about the overview of the market, just um, just to touch on the market on a broad basis. Uh, so us as investors can just take a little sit back and be able to look at, you know, get a holistic view of what's going on, how we can benefit from the, this huge downturn in the market and everything like that. So that's all we're going to do in today's video. So without taking too long, let's get right into it. The first thing that we've seen in the past year, if we take a look at the past 12 months, we've seen so many people quit their job. They even they even dub it the great resignation. So many people quit their job. Maybe they have a lot of money. They're feeling confident that they don't need a job. Maybe because of the pandemic, they've been able to shift uh, and start working as a freelance or freelancer. I mean, a lot of things that certainly happened. Look at me. I've been able to diversify and go into, into my own business uh, with the Turo. So check out those videos that I have on that. But yeah, like a lot of people like me probably diversify and just look into other things to do. And maybe that other things now is becoming a thing. And, you know, when you're working for yourself, you're kind of categorized differently in the eyes of the, of the tax system. So that could be an issue. The other thing that has also happened in the world is that like a lot of people have gotten into the stock market. Retail investors have gone into the stock market. There's been there have been a lot of research that is showing that retail investors are currently buying the dip. Meanwhile, institutions are getting out of the market. So there's a lot of things to talk about talk about in the market. W one thing I, I would always like to let, let everybody know is that the stock market is a way that you can make money over time. Times like this, is, this is not new. This has happened before in 2008 when the whole housing market collapsed. The housing market for the United States collapsed in 2008. Everything, I remember those times, you know, that's when I was coming of age. I was like 18, 19 at that time. Like everything went down. Even I panic sold my stocks at that time. And which I shouldn't have because if I had kept those stocks during those, during those times, it would have been worth a lot more today. So we see that happen during, the, um, during you know, 2008. It happened during uh, the dot-com dot bubble. It happened even if you go to way back in 1924. Um, it happened. This kind of recession happens all, you know, all the time. So we all should be very careful about our portfolio. And what, like this kind of thing, what I'm basically doing is that I'm buying my high conviction stock. Okay. My high conviction stock that I know whether rain or shine or, or or anything as long as we still exist on this planet and we're not being hit by a meteorite we are going to be okay with those companies okay that's what i'm doubling down on right now i'm buying my high conviction stocks so without taking too long let's get right into this there's a few things i want to show you guys if we just take a look at the market here take a look at the s p 500 we there is no doubt to say that we are in a bear market territory i mean very very soon we might even be close to recession because the federal reserve is not done with raising interest rate they're going to raise interest rate they have to raise interest rate to tackle inflation if they go if they don't inflation will run away from them and we don't want to have have inflation in the United States. So look, if we take a look at the market, the market is basically reacting to that. We're down this year, uh, like 17%. Year to day, we're down, yeah, year to day, we're down 17%. In the past year, if you just look at one year, not from January to now, we're down um, 3% actually, which is still not bad. S let's take a little zoom out. This is the one thing I always like to let people know. When in doubt, you got to zoom out of the charts, zoom out of the chart. Think about look on the chart when you started your portfolio. You, you know, this is like when the market was going down so bad, badly during this time, the, during the coronavirus, this was the best thing that could have done 
for my stock stock portfolio. Keep buying in and dollar cost averaging into the market. Ever since that low up to this high that we had, this was the fastest recovery that we've had. 100% that stocks gained. 100% here. And right now we're just seeing this this temporary down downwards pressure on the market right now, which is like 17% just because there's a lot of things that is going on in the world if we take a look at dow even the dow too like the dow is supposed to be very very stable companies you know a lot of these companies that are in the dow are very boring companies that have been around for hundreds of years even at that you know year to date is down 12 percent close to the s p 500 that is down 16 percent so six percent on a yearly basis again let's zoom out where are still up we're still up 50 percent um over a long period of time and if you look at a max period of time here you see that it's gone up quite significantly but if you take a look at five years it's gone up 52 percent in five years so again when in doubt look at the companies that you own and zoom out a little bit let's take a look at the tech sector here Yet to date, we're down 20, 28%, almost 29%. In one year, we're down 12%. And if we zoom out five years, we're up 85%. 85% in five years. Think about it. So, you know, during the times where, where things were falling here, like I said earlier, it was mad, it was scary. You know, that's probably the same thing that we're having here. And I personally think... I personally think we're still not done. We're still not done. I think the market is going to drop some more. And I'm going to show you some technicals that back that up in a little bit. But let's finish up with what we're doing here. Like, one of the biggest things that is stuck, that is causing a lot of this right now is inflation in the US. The inflation level is high. It's like 8%, right? A lot of people are not, have not had a situation where they're dealing with an 8.3% inflation. You know, this is high. Gas prices, people are feeling, feeling it. Even Congress is, is thinking about doing stimulus check for, for gas. Like, it's mad. Like, it, the inflation is really high. And when inflation is high, it affects everybody. You know, people don't have enough spending power. People cannot buy things as much. And, you know, the U.S. economy is a spending economy. People love to spend money in America. So, and, you know, the companies that are here, they love to sell stuff. And when people are paying so much money for gas, for food, for rent, everything is going up, they won't have enough money to be able to go out and buy things. That is why the, the stock market is throwing a fit right now. That's why the market is throwing a fit. If we take a look here, you know, it's right after COVID started going down that, you know, a lot of this stuff started happening. So what I would say is keep an eye on the inflation level, you know, keep an eye on the Fed, Federal Reserve. Those are those are the, the main people. To, <laughs> I said people. Those are the main, main things. Keeping an eye on what the Fed is going to do because right now, they raise they raise interest rate by 0.5%. And I feel it. I feel it on the on in terms of the interest rate that I'm paying. You know, I used to be able to borrow money on um on the two percent. Two percent on M1 now is like two point five two point um two hundred and three quarters percent. So, you know, the base we're filling the basis point. And the Fed still got like three to four meetings to go this year. So they're probably going to, people are estimating that they're going to raise interest rate um, to about three quarter percent or about one percent, 100 percent basis point. So we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. There is a lot of uncertainty in the U.S. economy, a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty in the market right now. And when uncertainty happens in the market, people don't have clarity companies don't have clarity companies cannot make you know plans and all these things so that is some of the reasons why you know the market has been down you know 
the war in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, the high inflation, companies are, 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 are not unsure of what's going on, you know, so, and this is not a situation that is just happening with, with the stock market. No, no, no. Take a quick look here. This is the price of Bitcoin recently. And Bitcoin too has been decimated this year. You know, down 40%. I actually think this might be a good time to be picking up some some Bitcoin and um and Ethereum. But if you just take a look, Bitcoin down down um down 40% year to date. If you look at one year, it's down 42% in one year. But if we take if we zoom out, the same thing too with Bitcoin. If we zoom out, we're up. This is just five years, guys. Five years is not a long time to stay invested in the market. In whatever it is that you want to invest in. Five years is not a long time. But if we zoom out five years here, we're looking at Bitcoin gaining over 1,200% gain. You know? So, right now, could really could, it's basically looking like a good time to start buying crypto, to start buying stocks because that's what i'm doing now personally what i'm looking to do right now is that i'm not putting much money into the vehicle right now i'm going to be diverting some money into crypto and the stock market because the st this this time times like this is where you want to put money into the market when things are uncertain you want to put money into the market but just not only put money into rubbish companies don't put money into rubbish companies. Don't put money into, you know, you can't blindly throw your money into the market. You have to put your money into, well, okay. <laughs> this is where I'm going to say not financial advice, okay, because I don't want uh, legal problems. Not financial advice, okay, not financial advice. But what I'm doing with my money, let me correct myself. What I'm doing with my money. I'm putting my money into high conviction companies, high conviction stocks. Like, for example, I'm putting my money still into Tesla stock, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla all day. And then I'm going to be putting my money into my monthly income section, which is ETF, a, ba a basket of ETFs that pay me on a monthly basis. And I'm buying them for cheap right now. If you take a look at one of the companies that I'm talking about, let me pull it up right now. So this is one of the companies that I'm, I'm buying on a regular basis. This is SPHD. This is a monthly stock uh, dividend paying stock. This company pays every month. And if we take a look at yearly basis, you know, are you, is it still up this year? Is it, this is the first time I'm looking at this. It's up, it's up this year. Let's look at one year. We're up for one year. So people are running to those safety. So it's holding it up. But when the market was down i've been buying this company this companies on a regular basis and i'm going to keep on buying this on a regular basis because i think people will flock to it and at the end of the day it still pays me you know dividend on a monthly basis and i'm going to keep on putting money into this let me show you the next one that i'm also putting more money into so the other company that i'm putting money into right now is jeppy i'm putting money into jeppy because i like the company i like what they're doing you know, this is a covered call ETF. And right now, covered calls will be making a lot of money because the market is going down. So I'm going to put a lot, of, a, a lot more money into this company and I get paid on a monthly basis with the ETF. Okay. In the past five years, it's been a steady growth, but they just started the ETF really. They just started this in 2022. I mean, 2020. So it's been around for two years and it's just been growing steadily. So right now that it's going down might potentially be a good time to be getting involved in this ETF right now. So the the final one that we all we all know and love that we put I'm um, putting money into right now is the S and P five hundred. You know you cannot beat putting money into the S and P five hundred. Not financial advice, but you cannot beat doing this. Like I personally put money into the VOO and I consistently put money into it and times like this is when I pull more money into the market just because the market is down so much 
and it's down because of ex- external things. All the things that is going on in the world right now, quite frankly, you and I don't have any control over. It. We don't have any control over what the Federal Reserve does. We don't have any control over what, um, you know, uh, J- Jerome Powell, what happened in Ukraine. What ha- what all these things that's happening all over the world, we have no control over. But we, could, we have control over, you know, our, our, what I call them, our soldiers, which is our money that we make from our hard work. We have money over it. That's your soldiers. You can basically put it into the market. And what I'm trying to do right now, I love buying companies when they're cheap. And right now, the market is so cheap. Let me show you a quick technical analysis of a few companies that I'm buying right now. And I think they're going to do very, very well, you know, in the next 12 months, or in the next 12 months to 24 months to two years. OK, so let's finish off with a quick technical analysis and we, we, we will we'll call it a day today. So let's get right into this quick technical right now, because this is the S&P 500, as you can see right at the top here. This is the S&P 500. This is the chart. The price action, the price movement, however way you're going to call it. This is the price movement of the top 500 companies in the United States. Now, there's some few things that I like to keep an eye on when it comes to um, where the where stocks are. And it's very important to basically keep an eye on, on, on levels in terms of where we're at today, have we been there in the past? Yada, yada, yada. Now, a lot of things, like, for example, right here, we've been here right here in the past. This this bottom has been has been a top in the past. So, let me, let me draw it out real quick. Okay. So, this bottom, this bottom so far here has been a top in the past and the market pushed up. Now, we are saying that the market is basically heading down. If we go to the higher time frame of one week, so let's take a look at one week here. You can see that it's right, it's right at the top of where it was at in in um, in March. So that's where we are right now, March of last year, of twenty one. Okay, so we've retraced a lot. And I, st- and I still, this is the MACD here. Look at where we are on the MACD. I think we're going to go down some more. So right now, I'm going to be conserving cash. I'm still dollar cost averaging like 100 bucks per day into the stock market. But, you know, and that is my $30 a day into Tesla stock. And then the other $70, I spread it across the market. I, cr- I spread it across stocks. Now, MACD is indicating that we're going down some more. RSI is also indicating that we're going down some more. Now, RSI right now is at 30, is at 31. That's where the RSI is. RSI is. So it won't be too bad to start picking up companies here. It won't be too bad at all because this looks like we are still going down. If we take a quick look here, this is the March when when COVID happened, right? This is when COVID happened. Look at this sell volume, massive sell volume that we that we had during the COVID time. Massive sell volume. People were just dumping stocks, right? And when people realize that the government will, will help out, there'll be vaccine, there'll be stuff, everything start going on, going on again. Now, if we take a look at the same time period, we look at the volume here. You see, if we put an average right here, the average volume should be where this my mouse is right here right if it put a line there let me see if we can do a quick so the more of the story is what i'm trying to say is that i personally think the market is going to go down some more so be careful uh because we haven't seen a reversal yet you know this right here when when we're around this area this is nice reversal uh we are basically we'll basically being an uptrend if we look at right here, right here, when we start seeing the the um, the divergence, you know, when we start seeing a little bit of divergence on the MACD, we know okay, the the market will start reversing and going back up. 
but not right now. Like, like MACD is indicating that we're going down some more. Chart is indicating that we're going down some more. RSI is doing the same thing. If we're breaking down to the to the uh, one day one day uh, time period, you can see that we are still very much on a downtrend here. So what I would do um, is just buy high conviction stocks knowing that they're still going to go down you know because as stock is dropping as stock is dropping normally that's when you want to purchase stocks that's when you want to buy stocks as they're going down you want to buy so situations like this as the market is going down that's when i'm going to be buying putting money into my highest conviction stocks and a few etfs that i'm that, I, that i'm really like now once we have um once we have a reversal once you have a reversal in the market and we've seen that we've seen a strong divergence on the MACD, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pouring mark money into the general market. Right now, I'm not looking to I'm not looking to looking to put too much money into right now. I'm not I'm not looking to put too much money into the market. I'm just you know trickling a little bit of money into the market as it's going down. So the last thing that I also want to touch on is the housing prices, housing market. The house, the housing market right now, the, the housing prices, it's really high. This is all time highs here in the housing ha, housing market. So 500K for an average home in the US is not what we want. You know, like 300,000, yeah, that's cool. You know, in you know ninety in in the nineteen nineties, the average home was was one hundred and fifty fifty one thousand. Now we're looking at five hundred k. Who is trying to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house? The mortgage would be like four five thousand dollars a month. In in America, is the only people that are like professionals that are able to get that. Even at that, they cannot because they have student loans. Okay, people are not starting families early because, you know, things are expensive. So the Fed needs to tackle this. They have to because this the housing prices is too high. So by them raising interest rate is going to slow down this right here. So like maybe something like this will happen. It will go. It will drop by like, you know, by like, you know, one hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand for average price real estate is still going to be high it's going to be it's going to i think eventually it will probably come down to roughly about three three something for the average price of real estate so if the fed don't tackle interest rate real estate price will be going will, will be going so high can you imagine if an average price for real estate is a million dollars and you cannot buy a house your rent is going up it's going to force so many people to be on the street. You know, governments don't want that. They want people to be able to have a place to live and that don't cost too much. Even if it wants to go up, they want it to go up 2% two, two a year. So uh, there's a lot of things in the world that we should all, you know, keep in mind and don't panic out of the market. I'm not going to panic. I'm going to do my dividend update real soon. I've basically lost all the gains and my account is a negative right now. And the last time I did it, I think my account was like at 85,000 and I had a gain of like 15,000 or something like that. So like the market has gone down a lot, but I'm not panicking. I'm just going to keep on doing my thing. Dollar cost average into my high conviction companies. And then I'm going to start buying a few more ETFs, monthly dividend ETFs and spy and, you know, a little bit of all those just buy some ETFs and I'm good. So yeah, I don't want this video to be too long. 20 minutes is already long. I appreciate you for watching. If you find value in this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you. Until next time, see you later. Love you all. Bye.